Programming in Context, Constructing and Troubleshooting. If you haven't already taken a look at the video on logic and looping, then I would recommend you go ahead and watch that one first. Um, in that video, the script is described that we will be building here, or rather rebuilding. I'd like to take you through some of the process of building that script and some of the troubleshooting that could have been done during that process in this video. So we'll take a look first of all at where to begin. So at the very outset nothing is here and one thing I like to do when starting a new program is to simply make sure that input and output are working the way that I expect them to. I'll just start with a read command and a prompt enter a number I can change that prompt anytime I can go back in and change that at any time to whatever I feel is most appropriate and then I'm going to want to make sure that there were no problems receiving a number or whatever the user inputs from uh, from the read command I want to make sure that that value is stored and that I'm able to print it out now so let's just do that chmod Go ahead and chmod all of them that way. Let's run logic and looping version 0. Enter a number, 5, and yes, it outputs 5. I could check it again if I really want to. It could be that and that would be fine as well. Right now I'm not checking whether it's a number that's actually input. So for now all I want to do is make sure output and input are operating correctly. <coughs> now, once I know my input and output are operating correctly, I can start to build my script a little more. So here, as you can see, compared to version 0, a fair amount more code has been written. Uh, now have the full user prompt written out. And we have a check to make sure that the input makes sense. Is it a number between 1 and 5? And we have a behavior if that check does if that check fails, that is, if the user input does not make sense. We'll print not a valid entry. And the idea here is that the while loop will continue prompting the user for input until we get good input. So let's try out this code. Okay, looks good so far. Let's try a 1. Okay, and that seemed to work. The code exited correctly. And if I have a situation here where I have no real output to tell me that the code 
executed correctly, I could type in dollar sign question mark and what I should have done was echo dollar sign question mark <laughs> dollar sign question mark outputs the uh, outputs the exit code of the last command run so the exit code for our code here was zero as shown right here now what I should have done was echo dollar sign question mark to show simply zero when I did that down here the exit code changed it's now 127 why because command not found for this command right here so there you go a little bonus on exit codes okay so the exit code from this bit of code that is from running this program was zero and I know that things are working okay now So remember, I ran it before, it was fine, exit code of zero. What happens if I run it and I give it a number it's not expecting, like eight? Okay, it prints not a valid entry. and everything exited fine but remember that what I want to happen is have the while loop keep prompting me for input keep prompting the user for input until the user gives valid input so why did it not do that Take a look at this code and see if you can figure out why the while loop stopped and it did not prompt me for good input. It did not keep prompting me over and over until I gave good input. Well, think about where the code is going. So, while the reply is the empty string, and it will be at the beginning. So we'll enter this code, we'll enter the while loop. While, and then we'll get the first prompt. Okay, and then if the reply is one through five, which we know it's not, and we go to else, we go echo, not a valid entry. Okay, and then we continue. All right, so that means we go all the way back up here to while, and then reply, the value stored at reply, does that equal the empty string now? Think about it. When we got input here, we got a value stored inside reply, and that value was never reset when we came back up to the top. So, does the value stored at reply equal the empty string? And the answer is no, it does not. So, this while loop will not execute anymore because this no longer evaluates to true. We now have a value stored at reply even though it's not a value we want. So what can we do about that? We can come down here inside the else code and we can simply reset reply to the empty string. Okay. Oops. Let's run it. Okay, seven. 
not a valid entry. Okay, I'm being prompted for a valid entry. Good, this is expected behavior. And we'll just confirm one more time. Everything ran fine. So now we can come to version 2. Now you see some of the functions. Now we have functions in place. Now these functions are really just placeholders right now. If you remember what the completed script looked like from the logic and looping video, you know that there is much more going on inside each function besides echoing a echoing if for case. So why might it be a good idea to simply start with these placeholders here? Well, there's more going on in the code down here now. The case which determines which function will run is now in place. And before I complete the functions, I just simply want to know if each function will be run successfully by case. So at this point, it doesn't matter to me what's inside each function. I'm only concerned about whether or not it runs. So why is this a good idea? Well, if I have a bunch of code already inside try4, and that code gives me errors, but I've completed all of this coding by the time I notice the error. I've completed the case, I've completed the function, I've completed the code inside the function, there's a lot of work I've done since the last check. And so that's a lot of work to inspect for an error when I run into it. Whereas if I do just a little bit of work at a time and then encounter an error, I've only got a little bit of code to start examining for errors. Since I know that the last time I checked my code, it had no errors. So, we'll just see if this one is running properly. We'll choose until. Good. That's exactly the behavior we want. It prints out until, and then it prints out a message saying that the code is completely done. And we can always check the exit code and it's zero once again, which is good. If we were encountering errors at any point in the code, and I'll go ahead and bring up The completed script with all of these functions filled out. If we wanted to see more of what was happening at any point in the code, we could set in these statements set x, set minus x, and set plus x around any block of code and then when we run that code when we run that code we get a line by line play of everything, every line of code that's being executed at any time. So why this is helpful is if we run into an error we can see the line of code that was executed right before that error. So I hope these have been some useful um, debugging tricks to see in action.